Hi, I'm Ovik Roy with Roy Healthcare Research, and I'm here with Shetel Hestal from Photocure, a Norwegian biotech company or specialty pharmaceutical company that's got a number of drugs out on the market, plus an interesting pipeline. I guess maybe we can start uh, by talking about uh, about the drugs that you're marketing. Yeah, it's um, thank you for having us here today and talking about Photocure. It's a pleasure for me to talk about Photocure. Uh, yeah, we are an emerging specialty pharma company, as you said, with a diversity of portfolio and actually two products that is on the market, Hexfix, the Hexfix brand for detection of bladder cancer, as well as Alamera for the improvement of skin. So the Hexfix is our flagship brand. It's called Sysview in the US and uh, Ibsen has the worldwide rights to commercialize the product except for Nordic and US where we are commercializing ourselves. And actually, we just launched Sysview on the US market uh, at the recent uh, American Academy of Urology, where we exposed ourselves for the first time to the US urologist community. And what's the market opportunity in bladder cancer? Bladder cancer is a very fascinating area to be in because there has not been any invention in that in, in decades. And Hexvix or CIS, we call it, as I said, we call it in the US, is, is a new opportunity for the urologist to improve the detection of bladder cancer. Uh, it's used together with the regular cystoscopy, and that is the bread and butter for, for uh, the urologist. And uh, in the US, it's approximately 230,000 procedures done each year uh, for uh, where CIS can be used. So that is over potential here in the US and uh, we just launched it so of course there is a way to go but we're very encouraged by how it's um, taken up or the awareness that we are creating with uh, with Sysview. How much are you charging for the for the uh, procedure in the US? Currently we are not we are we are not charging for the procedure we are we are selling the Sysview the drug and that uh, has, an average, has a selling price of 636 US dollars and it's uh, fully reimbursed f uh, from the Medicare. So we are, we are in a very good position and it's also a very good situation for, uh, for the hospitals but also of course that is available uh, fully reimbursed for the patients. And tell us more about it. So when you're a, when you're a urologist and you're, you're looking at a patient who you suspect has bladder cancer, how are they using CystView? So Sysview is then installed in the bladder one hour prior to the uh, cystoscopy examination. And when they do the uh, cystoscopy examination, they use um, cystoscopy. And that cystoscopy that is used together with uh, Sysview is then have a blue light uh, filter. So when the urologist switches between white light, regular white light and blue light, he will see that the cancer is fluorescent red on when he uses the blue light. So it really improves the ability for the doctor to see more. But also importantly is that when he sees more, he is able to resect it because that is part of the procedure that they remove the tumors that they can see. So what happens then is that you actually remove better because you take away everything. And, and it's, that is very, important for the bladder cancer patients because they are continuously uh, for checkups with cystoscopy and by using CISFU we have just recently published actually published was published at the uh, urology congress in Atlanta uh, weeks ago it was that using CISFU you reduce the recurrence rate not only detect more but you also reduce the recurrence rate what are the properties of CISFU that lead it to selectively migrate into the bladder cancer cells Sysview is uh, selectively taken up by uh, the cancer cells because among other mechanisms of action is that cancer cells ha seem to have a higher metabolic rate compared to normal and that's how you create the selectivity. And you don't have to invest a lot of money commercializing this product in the US, if I understand correctly. Um, as the urological uh, market in the US is very similar to the um, to, for example, the Danish market, and what is the is characterized by that is a very target population. So you can easily, you know where the procedure is done, and the procedure is mainly done in the major urology departments, academic institutions in the U.S. So you can cover the uh, 
big amount of the market by uh, targeting the group with a low number of uh, sales reps. How many sales reps do you think you'll have when you fully build out your U.S. sales force? We estimate that we will be able to fully cover the U.S. market with 30 to 50 sales reps. And um, we're starting as, uh, as the institution is coming on board. We will start with approximately 15 this year and then we build, we'll be able to build as uh, the use is uh, increasing and that is where we limit the uh, investment up front and build the organization as, as we increase the sales. And outside the U.S. Uh, you have a partnership with Ipsen. You can tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, it, Ipsen is a very interesting partner for, for uh, Hexfix and Ipsen has the right to Hexfix uh, actually in the whole world except Nordic and US. So you're right that Ipsen is, is a very major partner, especially in the European marketplace, where they have a good presence in urology and, uh, and one of their major products, the Capeptide for treatment of prostate cancer, is, is a product that they support with approximately 200 sales reps in the European market. And Hexfix will easily fit into that and be a very strategic, important fit for Ibsen. So we are very encouraged by how Ibsen is building up their uh, support for uh, Hexfix. Have you disclosed the royalty rate that you get from Ibsen? We benefit from a very good uh, royalty rate and it's very similar to what you see in the pharmaceutical industry for a phase 3 product. So, um, so we benefit from, uh, from royalties, but we have also uh, sales milestones. And we have also received uh, signing milestones as well as transition milestones up to now. What would you say is the peak market opportunity for this drug if it's used, maybe not in all patients, but a reasonable proportion given the clinical utility in the U.S. and Europe? We have, we have been uh, in the market in the Nordic area for uh, five years, where we have uh, built up uh, ourselves in, uh, throughout the market, and we have a penetration of 30%. And when we talk about market share, we talk about the number of cystoscopy procedures done in the operating theater. 30% of all cystoscopy procedures in the, uh, in the Nordic region are they're using your product? Across the Nordic, yes. Yeah, that's pretty least. impressive. So that is, and in Europe and US, it's approximately 500,000 procedure done a year, yearly. So there, there is a potential for a product, and it's really a potential since we now also can do it ourselves in the, U, in the US. And we hope to repeat what we have achieved in the Nordic. Great. So let's talk about Alumara, your second drug. Tell me a little bit about that. Alumera is a new concept in, uh, for our technology, and our technology is a photodynamic technology. So Alumera is the first photodynamic cosmetic, meaning that when you use Alumera, it's, its intended use is to improve the appearance of skin by reducing the appearance of pores. So it's a cosmetic product that is used together with light source uh, and it's sold to the dermatology health professionals, you know, the dermatology practices in uh, in US especially. Can they use their existing PUVA light sources or would they have to buy new boxes to use your product? No, Alumera is developed to be used by the existing light sources that is available at the dermatology offices and uh, PUVA is not the appropriate, but other light sources like blue light, red light, IPLs, and uh, laser. Okay. And uh, and so that's more of a cash-paying uh, procedure. You're not really dealing with reimbursement that much. And it's 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 the is it mostly dermatologists, or do you use, is there a cosmetic market along with the dermatology market? For Fudicure, we have been working with dermatologists for a long time, and actually our first product was uh, Metvix, uh, or Metvixia called in the US, and that is for treatment of skin cancer. And, and Alumera is for us a continuation of, of that, and um, it's also a product that will bring us into the dermatology market in the US. So we target the dermatologists, the health professionals. And why are we doing that? It's because that is where they do a lot of cosmetic procedures and that, not only that, but we create a relationship with the U.S. dermatologist for our next product. 
and our next product is Visnok. And Visnok is a product for treatment that we develop for treatment of moderate to severe acne. And we just finished the phase 2 B study uh, and announced that last week, showing a significant improvement uh, compared to the control that was uh, vehicle plus uh, light. And uh, we are initiating our development in phase 3 and want to market uh, Visnok to our own commercial dermatology unit here in the US. When would you expect to report out the phase 3 data from that study? Uh, the phase 3 data will probably, we will initiate the study in 2013 and we will probably then um, have the data available uh, in 2014 with, uh, with the filing and then we hope to be plan to be on the, in the marketplace in the transition of 2015 and 16. And what's the primary endpoint in the study? The primary endpoint in, in all acne studies is actually a reduction of uh, lesions. And what is the typical lesions that is, uh, is what you see in moderate to severe acne is inflammatory lesions. You know, the red uh, pustules and, uh, and we, we are then having that as a, as a primary endpoint. But also what is important is the overall global sc scale or scoring system that we use in acne. So uh, it's also improvement of the overall uh, severity of the acne. That is was one of the key measurements that we had in our phase 2b study and we saw that approximately 45% of the patients had a really good improvement in their acne. How did you define, so in, in, on those two endpoints, on lesion reduction and on the global scale, how did you do, how, what, what sort of improvements did you see? So uh, typically all the patients that we included was defined as severe according to this scale and to have an improvement they had to have an improvement of uh, at least two grades meaning they're going from severe to at least mild acne uh, and we saw that 45% of approximately 45% of the patients had that, obtained that high barrier. So we're very encouraged by the data and we were very encouraged by the you're getting a very high statistical significance in only 150 patients. So, How does that magnitude of response compare to existing products for acne? The magnitude of the response is very comparable to, to oral antibiotics. Uh, it is, and that is also the positioning that we are targeting because oral antibiotic has some um, limitations, especially limitation is of course that you have to take a pill that where there are a risk for developing uh, bacterial resistance. But also when you stop taking your oral antibiotic, you have easily a rebound. So that is where we are targeting our uh, Visnok to be an alternative for those that, that really need an alternative to oral antibiotic or even isotretinoin because there is an extensive use of isotretinoin in the moderate to severe acne population and with uh, all the side effects and all the focus on tetragenicity as well as other severe side effects with the isotretinoin there seems to, at least the market research we have done uh, indicate that there is a need for, an, for new alternatives. Do you intend to, I mean, one of the things that's interesting about Norwegian companies is the Norwegian krona has been a very strong currency relative to other Western currencies. Uh, and so, you know, there's a question if you have a, a U.S., a heavy U.S.-based revenue stream, do you plan to engage in any hedging activities or how do you think about the, 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 the very volatile currency situation we, uh, we will continue to be in for some time? Fortunately, Furikur is, is uh, we are a listed company and we, are, we have a very good um, solid balance sheet with uh, a good cash position. So we are not that vul uh, vulnerable to the fluctuation in the currencies. Uh, so that doesn't really impact us and we are not uh, a financial institution. Our competence is in, uh, is in developing products that has, uh, can meet a medical need. And that is where we create value. And would you, would you need to raise money additionally to fund some of the other things in your pipeline or do you feel that you can, with your existing revenue streams, you can basically fund most of your R&D going forward? 
So with the organic uh, plan we have uh, both in support of commercial activities in urology and dermatology as well as support of our R&D portfolio, seeing revenue streams from of course the sales revenues but also from milestones we we do not see the need for cash however building up a commercial infrastructure in the US it's also interesting to look for new opportunities uh, to fill that um, commercial infrastructure so if we are when we are searching for those opportunities we will probably need uh, a different financial uh... how much do you expect the phase 3 trial to cost uh... That is, you know, we have, um, we have, we are currently just finished up the phase 2B for Visnok and, um, and we will then engage with the different regulatory authorities both in Europe and US and when we know exactly how many patients you need, how long time you need to follow up, etc. then we will be able to address that. But as, as I said, we, are, we have a very good uh, cash position so we are very confident that we will be able to do that with any new financial. Makes sense. Great. Well, Chetel Hestel, Tuz and Tech, thanks for joining us today and uh, best of luck with everything. Thank you too and thank you for all the good questions. It's a <laughs> pleasure for you too.